And so as we kind of reflect on this question of has the earth really warmed over time, we can say yes, temperatures are indeed increasing. We have evidence at multiple timescales that indeed temperatures are increasing, but more specifically, we know that the rate of change is much, much greater now than it has ever been in the history of the earth. And that's really why um, climate change is such an important issue to really focus on and discuss. And so as we kind of think about this, this is kind of what we often refer to as a kind of a climate myth, is understanding there's a lot of, of people who, who believe that perhaps this is not true. And there's many other issues kind of related to climate change that people are, are suspicious about. And so another one of these is that perhaps that sea levels are not what we think they are. And they, they claim, perhaps claim that sea levels are lowering. And so actually climate change is a hoax. And this is their evidence. And so what we need to do is kind of build on the foundation of things that we already know. We already collected evidence so far to understand that indeed temperatures, global temperatures, are actually increasing. So we just kind of take a little bit about what we know already about the chemistry of water and so forth. We can kind of think about what happens when we change temperatures. Well, of course, if we do increase the temperature, and of course it's wonderful that water has this high specific heat, so it's kind of resisting change, but if we do increase the temperatures, what actually happens to water is it actually increases in bulk, if you will, okay? And so it's actually taking up more space if it's warmer. And we know already that global temperatures are indeed warming based on the evidence we've collected. And so one thing that we know is gonna happen is that these oceans, which are the major volume of most of the water on Earth, is actually going to expand simply because we have greater global temperatures, which includes um, the temperatures of the ocean. And so that's one factor that could actually increase the water levels of sea level. Another kind of just basic physics kind of component is to kind of think in terms of, well, what happens to some of these glaciers? And so you can kind of see this depiction at the bottom that suggests that, well, if we have sea ice, which kind of in simple terms reflects kind of ice floating around in your, in your drink, is if you increase the temperature, what's gonna happen is those ice cubes are gonna melt, but it doesn't really change the level of that water that you actually had if we know that the, the change in temperature of that water doesn't change all that much, you know, um, accounting for what we see up here. But we know that, that it's not gonna change a whole lot. What's really the biggest factor is when you have ice that's actually occurring on land, when you have glaciers and, 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 and ice forms that are, are attached to land surfaces and then they melt, that's what's really actually happening and contributing to this increase in these sea levels. And of course, if we were to then say, okay, well, this is the physics of it, does this actually happen? Can we see this actually occurring? Well, we can go to multiple da different data sets, and this just reflects kind of a handful of them that we can clearly see over time, over long time scales, that we can look at the kind of um, <clears throat> the sea level, this is the global mean sea level anomaly or the kind of change in these things, and they are indeed increasing over time. And there's lots and lots of different studies that have suggested that this is happening in many different parts of the world. And I can show you data sets from, from oceans and, and, and coastal areas across the world that is seeing this exact same pattern to kind of contribute to this um, accumulating evidence. In addition, we can kind of look at satellite data to kind of understand, well, what happens if, we, if we're able to kind of make these observations from satellites that are floating around the Earth and understand not just kind of these tidal gauges, but, but, but use actual um, technology to kind of understand these things. And we can clearly see that, that the sea level change is happening. And, and interestingly, the rate of change is, is really, really significantly higher than we ever saw before. And so we get the same type of kind of conclusion here for understanding what's actually going on with climate change in this regard. And we know that yes, sea levels are rising. We have evidence that demonstrates that that's happening. We have tidal gauges and we have satellite data to be able to understand this is happening. And it's not just in one location, but many locations throughout the globe. And we can also understand that the kind of rate of this change, the rate of these increases in sea levels is also greater than what we've actually seen in the past. 
So another kind of myth, if you will, are, are, are folks trying to, when they talk about climate change, talk a little bit about glaciers and suggest, well, I've actually seen data that glaciers are growing. And so perhaps, again, climate change is just this hoax and it's, it's really not something that's going on. And we know that glaciers are an important thing to consider because they occur on almost every single continent. They are everywhere um, and they're very, very important to kind of understanding our climate and, and understanding what happens, as I already mentioned, even which is sea levels. And so this question of, of understanding, have these glaciers been growing over time? Have they been shrinking? Have they been staying the same? We can actually go to historic photos and be able to answer this exact question. And so here is a historic photo um, in Washington, looking at one of our own um, national parks in North America. And you can clearly see the upper image shows a picture that was taken in 1936. And the red arrows um, on the top and the bottom indicate the exact same locations on both um, photos so you can kind of see the relative proportions of snow or of glaciers that were present in Olympic National Park. And you can clearly see in the image on the bottom, which is many years later, that we have lost a great amount um, of glacial mass in this particular time period. And this is in North America. But what if we go in other places? Say we go to the Southern Hemisphere and we go to New Zealand. Well, we actually get a very same, a very, very similar picture. And this, you can see the upper image um, was taken, the, the shot was taken in 2010, and the bottom one was only taken four years later. And you can clearly see a vast difference in terms of the glacier mass um, lost in that particular case. Again, that little yellow dot um, is a reference so that you can identify the exact same spot on both of the images. But the kind of take home message is that we're losing lots and lots of mass. But perhaps I kind of cherry picked and I only looked at um, one national park in North America and I looked at um, the Franz Joseph Glacier in uh, uh, New Zealand and that's the only places. Well, I can show you data from lots of other places. So here is an image um, of Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa and you can clearly see the, the loss of the glacial mass in this particular region. And we can look even um, in the Himalaya and understand the glacial retreat. Um, so it's it's the math, the mass, and, and the kind of sheer volume of, of this uh, particular glacial glacier is is decreasing over size um, over time rather. And it's not just the extent or the size of this glacier, but in some cases it's actually the thickness is, is also changing. Um, and you can kind of see this as a graph in general of the cumulative changes shown in, in blue that it's clearly the thickness is declining over time. And although there are annual changes, they're reflective of, of other things like the, 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 the items on the bottom refer to some of these um, volcanic eruptions, which in many cases it spews a whole bunch of dust into the atmosphere and the dust is able to block the sunlight. Um, um, in essence, it, it, it um, enters a period of cooling, which actually can increase um, the accumulation of glaciers. Um, that can be a good thing for glaciers. Um, but overall, we still see this general trend um, of declining um, glacial, glacial thickness over time. So we get the same general picture. Glaciers are shrinking um, and the average trend is clearly shrinking because we know that there are some regions, you may have seen some data um, about the fact that the Arctic losses are not quite as drastic as some of these other regions that I've just shown you pictures of. And in some cases, if you go to parts of the Antarctic, you may even see that the glaciers may be growing. But it's important for us to kind of look at the average, the global average, because that's really what's affecting our climate. And on average, the glaciers are indeed shrinking. And so as scientists, it's important for us to look at multiple lines of evidence to be able to understand, do we support an idea or not? And so if we look at this first idea that temperatures are perhaps not rising, that's kind of what a lot of folks may be saying. And we know that the multiple lines of evidence suggest that is not true, is that global temperatures are indeed rising and they have been rising and the rate of change is really, really significantly greater than we've seen in the past. If we consider what happens to sea levels, we know that they are not lowering, but they are increasing. The sea levels are, are rising and getting higher um, and higher and higher. Uh, if we look at glaciers and say, are there growing? Yes, there are a few that, that, that are growing, but the average is not that case. And the average is that they are indeed shrinking. And so it's important to kind of use um, the skills that you've gained um, kind of the scientific reasoning and, and thinking about collecting data and, and weighing what we know about it to kind of answer questions about climate. And we can use a lot of this, this type of thinking to kind of understand um, what climate, what's important about climate and how to weigh the evidence that we have. And in many cases, understand that indeed climate change is happening.